channel and Planet X News. This is Scott from the Nibiru channel. I have a space weather report for you, and we're going to be going over some material and taking a look at some things that are going on in space that is definitely affecting our planet. But before we get into all of that, I just wanted to make a small general announcement. This upcoming Tuesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Time, we are going to have a special guest joining us on a live stream, and this is going to be our introduction to everyone, and we're going to be bringing on board our physicist, who has been helping us for quite some time understanding the science behind what is going on in our solar system. Now, as you all know, we have so many people out there that just absolutely say for a fact that there is nothing going on in our solar system. They just do not want to believe. Well, the fact of the matter is there is something going on in our solar system and the possibilities of it being detrimental to humanity are quite big. So we're going to be bringing her on board. She is a professor of physics with more than 17 years teaching at a major university. She also has a PhD, and we will be referring to her as the doctor because she also has a doctorate. She's very, very smart, very intelligent, and she never believed in anything related to rogue planets or other types of solar systems moving into our solar system. However, on one fateful day, as she was taking a walk, she started to notice things in the sky that were not normal to her. And as she would continue her daily walks over the course of a year, she started to notice more and more things that were not quite right. And then one day, she happened to look up through the clouds as the sun was setting, and she saw something that caught her eye. And that was the beginning of her interest and her investigations and her research into Planet X. And she has come up with some fantastic information. She's been helping Chris Potter for quite some time, and she has come under a lot of criticism from trolling organizations on YouTube. And it's quite disturbing at the lengths of what these people will do to discredit an individual who is simply trying to help find out what is going on. And I'm very excited that she's now on board with us. And she's been doing research now for almost a year. And she is going to be publishing a lot of her material based on her research of brown dwarf stars. So I will make an announcement again. I will have this live stream up on the Planet X News channel. And this will be this upcoming Tuesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. If you happen to miss the live stream, the video will be up and it's going to be approximately two hours. So if you are interested in a lot of the scientific information behind what is going on in our solar system, what has been going on for quite some time and being hidden from us, being hidden in plain sight, most definitely join us. And if you are not subscribed to the Planet X News channel, make sure you subscribe. Now, we will be back uploading videos to the Nibiru channel probably next week. We had a little tiff with YouTube on a video that I had put out, and they suspended uploads for 14 days. No big deal. I have six YouTube channels, and we will continue to get the word out. I've named it The Awakening because that is what we all need to do. We all need to come to terms 
with what is happening around the world. So therefore, we must wake up. If you don't wake up, you're going to get caught off guard. And everything is stacked against us. And that's a shame, but we're going to have to fight through it. And I'll be honest, some of us will make it, some of us won't. But banding together as one, as a people, will be the most important. So we're going to get into some of this space weather because there is quite a lot. And the current situation with our sun is very serious, very serious. And I'm going to try each and every day to update this information as things are occurring. But one thing is for sure. Some of the data that we use to analyze things going on in our inner solar system and around the sun, well, they're being doctored. They're being doctored by you know who. There are some things out there that they do not want us to see. They are skewing the information. And the same thing is happening with earthquakes around the globe. They are not reporting some of these earthquakes. And we have definite beliefs that they are downplaying magnitudes of earthquakes and keeping everything below a magnitude five. There has been some credible evidence out there that does detail this information, and we're going to dig into it. There was also a couple of situations last week dealing with these rogue waves. A rogue wave crashed into a populated beach in Iran and then into a beach in South Africa. Now, we've looked into this. Several other YouTube channels have looked into this. Uh, just the other day, Dutch Sins was talking about it on his YouTube channel. And the fact of the matter is, ladies and gentlemen, there was no earthquake reported in the oceans surrounding these two areas. But yet these rogue waves came in out of nowhere, crashing into the shores. And these were populated beach areas with tourists and travelers. But yet no earthquake reported off of the shores of either one of these countries. Very suspicious. And if you look at the dynamics of these small tsunamis or this rogue wave, the dynamics are there has to be some type of uplift on the floor of the ocean to create this type of wave. And it not only happened once, but it happened twice on different days, thousands of miles apart, but yet no detection of an earthquake. But you have to remember something. They control the data. And if they don't want you to see the data, you're not going to see it. They'll blame it on something else, such as a storm or whatever. And from what I understand, tsunami buoys, ocean detection systems, never picked up anything. So once again, we're in a fight to gather information and bring it to you. And some of the information is being censored. That much is a fact. So let's take a look at what is happening on our sun as we speak. We're looking at the SDO footage of our sun. The, um, the one coronal hole that was causing the major uh, solar wind is now passing. As you can see, I'll circle it with my cursor. It's passing, but its friend is now coming around once again. Now, we've seen this pattern consistently throughout most of 2016 and now in 2017. We are nearing the end of March and this consistency with the coronal holes, well, it just keeps happening. And once again, 
If you're new to this channel and you're not very familiar with these coronal holes, I'll just explain it rather quickly. The very light shaded area that you see on the sun, the corona, I refer to it in layman's terms as cloud cover. And when you start to see these big dark openings, well, let's just say that cloud cover splits and opens. And what that allows is it allows the solar wind, which is really not wind, but very heavy streams of particles from the sun. And they range anywhere from around a million to a million miles per hour. And it doesn't take very long for those solar winds to impact the earth. And when they impact the earth, they penetrate all the way through to the core of the earth, therefore heating up the core, which in turn causes earthquakes. And on top of that, ladies and gentlemen, it's just not healthy for any human life. On top of the solar wind and the coronal holes, we've, we've been under constantly for, for weeks and weeks now, UV levels off the chart. The mechanisms that monitor the, the UV, they don't even have a reading to go high enough. So there is definitely something going on with our sun. Something is definitely drawing energy from it, creating these coronal holes. Now, when our physicist comes on board on Tuesday, we are going to talk about this in a scientific way so everyone can understand the possibilities of what is creating this situation. You know, we never want to see the sun go dark. However, it is prophesized in the Bible. Will we see the sun go dark? I hope not. But the fact of the matter is, there is definitely something going on, and we're simply trying to get to the bottom of it. And as we're trying to get to the bottom of it, we come under this super high scrutiny of people. But they'll be the first ones crying when all hell breaks loose. So we're going to go ahead and start looking at more of this information each and every day. So now that we've examined the coronal holes, and that's a 48-hour loop from the SDO, now we're going to take a look at the solar winds. And these solar winds were buffeting the earth pretty bad. And we're going to go ahead down here. I'm going to adjust this because they keep skewing the information and we're not getting the exact information that we need. So if you just bear with me here. And this, uh, this data is very easily manipulated by the powers that be. So what you're looking at here is you're looking at the solar wind as it impacts the Earth. Now, right below to the very lower right-hand corner, you're going to see a color code. And the color code goes from dark blue to light blue. When it gets into the green and the yellow and the orange and the red, well, that's just not good. And as you can see, the length of these arrows is much longer than it normally is. If the solar winds are slower, then those arrows are shorter. So what you're looking at now is you're looking at solar winds buffeting the earth at approximately 1.5 million miles per hour. The Earth's magnetosphere does what it can to protect us, but when it's under siege constantly, it's being damaged. And it fluctuates a lot, and we're going we're gonna to show you that. And the solar winds do have the ability to penetrate and wrap around the magnetosphere, the bow shock. The bow shock, if you could follow my cursor, would be the front side of the Earth, the daytime side that is facing the sun. 
So we're definitely getting hit with these solar winds. Absolutely, no doubt about it. So we're going to go ahead and move on. And we are going to take a look at our magnetosphere. The magneto pause. I'm just going to go ahead and update the date. Now, some of this data, they won't give us the exact date for today. Sometimes it lags a day or two. And this will give us all the way back to the 22nd, and that's it. As you can see at the top here, March 22nd. And once again, the, the small arch that you see in front of the Earth, that is the, the bow shock, as they call it. It's imaginary. This is computer animated as it's taking in the data. And what this is showing you is the intensity of the solar winds that are buffeting the magnetopause. You could also see in the shades of yellow behind the Earth, on the dark side of the Earth, penetrating in. Also, on the front side of the bow shock, you can see the colors the yellows, the oranges, and the reds in the front, which basically signifies the intensity that the magnetopause is under. So now that we've covered that, we're going to go ahead and move on. Now we're going to look at the actual magnetosphere itself. We're going to go ahead and update this. See what we get. Now it will give us up to March 22nd, as you can see at the top. And what you're looking at over here, if you follow my cursor, here's our Earth, the dark side, and the daytime side. The black lines are what they call magnetic field lines. And once again, this is computer animated and it shows the computer animation according to the data that it's receiving. You can see the flowing fluctuations as the solar winds impact the Earth. And this is really not a normal magnetopause animation at all. Usually you would not see these heavy flowing fluctuations. You would see a pretty nice tight stream. But the Earth is trying to fight back what's being done from the solar winds impacting the Earth. And again, this situation is not good. This is not something that we want to see on a daily basis. Now, there have been several situations over the course of a few years here and there where there is something called a magnetosphere or magnetopause reversal, which means what you're looking at completely reverses itself and goes the other way. And that's very dangerous for our planet, very dangerous for every living, breathing creature on this planet. So that is why we pay very, very close attention to a lot of these animations. Now, I will admit, these animations, they can be manipulated. The information going into these animations can be skewed, and it could be made to look like whatever they want. But what you're looking at right now is not normal in any sense of the word. Now, if anybody tells you, any of these trolls, in the comment section that what you're looking at is normal, well... Just tell them to, you know, you know where to tell them. You know what to tell them. But it's definitely not normal, ladies and gentlemen. Under, there's, there's just no way. This is not normal at all. Now, what we're looking at here is radiation impacting the Earth. Let's make this a little bit bigger so you can see it. And this won't go back uh, past or excuse me, we, we can't get the data up to date. So it will start on the 20th of March. 
And again, you have the color coding over here to the, to the uh, lower right. And normally, this whole area where you follow my cursor is pretty much enveloped in light blue. But as you can see, these radiation levels are much, much higher. The little dotted line is the orbit of satellites. And you can see everything enveloped around the Earth is very, very high as far as radiation levels. Once again, that is not good for any living, breathing creature on this planet. That includes humans. So if you happen to work outside, try to wear long sleeves, try to wear a hat on your head, because the UV rays, I mean, again, they're, they're off the chart. Steadily at 10, and if these detectors could probably go higher, they would probably be able to detect much higher UV radiation. But the bottom line is, there's definitely something brewing in the inner solar system. And we're going to try to get to the bottom of it. But even if we get to the bottom of it, what can we do about it? Preparation is about the only thing that we can do about it. And informing other people. I know a lot of this is hard to explain. I get a lot of emails from people that say, hey, Scott, how can I explain this to my family? How can I explain this to my brother, my sister, my aunts, my uncles, my friends? Well, number one, you have to have an open mind. And so many people around the world are just completely dumbed down to what's going on around them. And that's a bad thing. You really have to start understanding what's going on in the skies above us and in our inner solar system. A lot of the scientific data, yes, I agree. You know, some of it is hard to understand. I try to do my best to make it understandable. But if you're watching these videos and you are subscribed to Planet X channels anywhere on YouTube, it's now going to be your responsibility to help others out by informing them so they at least have a chance to start gaining the knowledge that you're gaining. Refer them to our channels, get them on board with what's going on, and have these talks with them. So they understand. Sit down with them if you have to and bring up one of these videos. Hold their hand all the way through the process. Do your part. Because I truly believe that we are in the awakening stage around the world. More and more people are paying attention to what's happening in the skies above. If you don't, like I've said before, you're going to get caught off guard and it's not going to be a good situation. Now, what we're looking at here, this is the real-time solar winds and density and some other scientific data. And as you guide this cursor across, and we're looking at the purple line right here, it will give you the solar winds. Now, since we did have the huge influx of approximately 2.5 million miles per hour of solar winds impacting the Earth, it has settled down somewhat. But that is only because the first coronal hole that we looked at is now passing. So as of right now, we're looking at 576 kilometers per second. That's probably somewhat over a million. 1,200,000, 1,300,000 miles per hour. Still pretty fast. But, once again, the large corona hole that's passing is bringing along a friend once again. And it's a lot bigger. And it still has more time to open up and develop 
over the next 72 hours. And we will probably feel the impacts of this over the course of the next five to seven days. And once again, if you're living in any type of earthquake zone where you are susceptible to earthquake activity, volcanic activity, be prepared. That's all I can tell you. Be prepared. We've already seen an increase over the past five days of earthquake activity on the west coast of the United States and naturally over in the South Pacific and in the Alaskan region, as well as the Mediterranean region, uh, Italy, uh, Turkey, those areas there, Greece. So it's just like we're sitting on pins and needles waiting for this first catastrophic earthquake. You just do not want to get caught off guard. Have a preparedness plan. Have an emergency evacuation plan. As I've mentioned before, go to a department store, Walmart, wherever. Pick up some of those big plastic bins with a lid. Create your own preparedness package, extra clothes, medical equipment, such as, you know, a medical bag. They have them everywhere. Buy a medium-sized one. You may need it. Some non-perishable food, bottled water. If you have to evacuate and you have important papers, put them in a lockbox. Put those, you know, in your bug out bag. Make sure that container fits in the trunk of your car or your SUV. Keep it somewhere where you have it accessible. Because after the evacuation situation in Oroville, California, even though it was semi-organized, when you look at it now, it was completely disorganized. A lot of people didn't know what to do. And just using the phrase, they were left out in the cold. And at times like that, you cannot depend on anybody else except yourself. Each and every day, I'll try to continue giving a space weather report on what's happening. Next time, I won't make it so lengthy. But there's a lot of information to cover, and I haven't even gotten into what's happening as far as earthquakes around the globe. But since I mentioned it, let's just take a quick look. Well, since I looked at this a few hours ago, you can see the intensity has already picked up. Colombia, 5.3. Peru, 4.4. Peru, 4.5. Ferndale, California, 3.6. There's so many earthquakes in the California area right now. A lot of them traveling down along the San Andreas Fault region. A couple in Oklahoma. A 2.36 near the New Madrid Fault Line. Alaska, seeing a lot of activity. The Mediterranean, Greece, 4.7. Turkey, 4.2. Pakistan, 4.9. Well, folks, it just goes on and on. And this particular site does not report every earthquake. We have to actually go to four or five different earthquake reporting sites to get all of the information. What you're looking at here is. Europe and the Mediterranean. And everything you see in red is earthquake activity in the last 24 hours. What you see in purple is an earthquake that occurred within the last hour. And then they have the worldwide. So what you're looking at here is what they are recording for the last 24 hours. But once again, they do not record all of the earthquakes around the globe. Like I said, we have to go to five or six different reporting agencies to gather all of the information accurately. I mean, we even have a seismology office in Mexico because they don't report the earthquakes that are occurring constantly on the lower west coast of Mexico. This has been going on constantly 
for the past year and four months now. And what you're looking at here are all of the earthquakes along the western Mexico coast for the last two and three days. Earthquakes that were two days old are in green, and the earthquakes that are in the gold color are about three days old. And they're constant, nonstop. And we still have quite a bit of volcanic activity around the globe. And since I have your attention, we might as well take a look at the earthquake activity around the globe. I think it was last week we had more than 35 volcanoes that were currently active. What you're looking at right now, again, these are all of the volcanoes around the globe that are in full eruption. Not just puffing out a little bit of smoke. You look right up here where my cursor is. The red signifies in eruption. So, once again, it is the sign of the times, ladies and gentlemen. It is the sign of the times. This is what's happening on the earth. There may be those people that want to tell you, oh, this happens all the time. Nothing to see here. Okay, well, if there's nothing to see here, why are you here? Why are you here watching what's happening? Oh, you want to put in your two cents. Well, go right ahead. Put in your two cents, leave it in the jar, and take a hike. Because there are real people out there in this world that want to keep themselves informed. They want to stay on top of it. They want to be a survivor. They want to be a fighter. They don't want to be one of these dumbed down trolls, work for the government. They're going to end up, they're going to end up, uh, eh, they'll end up working for us. We'll turn them all into slaves. Bad people, just very bad people. I'm sure you see them in the comment section of all of the videos. I don't have time to hang out in the comment sections of the videos, but from what I see, the subscribers to my YouTube channels, listen, I want to thank all of you. You guys do a fantastic job handling these people that just want to spew their hatred and their derogatory comments. You have my blessing to kick them around and teach them a lesson. Because all they're going to do is create disruptions. That's what they're paid to do. So if you can do me a favor, ladies and gentlemen, you handle these people in the comment section. Put them in their place. That's the best thing that I could say. Just put them directly where they belong. Now, in the course of the next couple of days, we are going to keep on top of the space weather because it is going to be a pretty hot topic with the size of that coronal hole that is going to be turning towards Earth within the next 48 hours. That one looks pretty deep, it looks pretty big, and we'll be monitoring that 24 hours a day, seven days a week, until we're in the clear. But will we be in the clear? Is there another coronal hole on the backside of the sun that's going to be impacting Earth once again? So, ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned. That's the end of my space weather report for today. If anything else pops up, I'll bring it to you live on the Planet X News channel. And once again, if you miss the live feed, it will always be saved as a video on this channel. Once again, we will be back uploading videos to the Nibiru Planet X 2016 channel sometime next week. And when we come back onto that channel, we are coming back with a vengeance and a bang. I'd like to thank all of you also for supporting my channels and supporting me. I know I'm not able to respond to each and every one of your emails because I get I get about six to six hundred to a thousand emails a day, and between analyzing the photographs and the videos and trying to get back to people, I don't have enough time in a day. But I thank all of you for staying tuned, and for all of you who send in the very heartfelt emails 
I really appreciate it. There's a lot of emails that I get in the course of the week. I'll be quite honest. They choke me up. They, they, they put a lump in my throat when I read some of these, these emails. A lot of you thank me for what I do, but there is no thanks needed. Just knowing each and every day that each and every one of you are out there somewhere on this planet supporting me and supporting what I'm doing. Because you may think some of people, you know, some people may think that, oh, it's some guy with a YouTube channel. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to be quite honest with you. Some of what I do here on my YouTube channel, you know, the information that we produce and we put out there, there are people that want to silence you. They want you to go away. They monitor everything that you do. And we know how they can do that. Technology, I'm sure you've all seen the articles that came out about, you know, tapping into your television, your cell phone, and for all of you who have the cable TV where you have the remote control that you can speak into. Yeah, I'll admit it. Last week, I was talking into my remote control, and it wasn't to change the channel. <laughs> it was to give a message to whoever is possibly listening that once the doors to the golden bunkers close, you're not getting that golden ticket. You're going to be up here with us, the common man and woman. We'll have to figure out what we're going to do with you. But this is Scott from the Nibiru channel, Planet X News. Thank you for watching. Don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Nibiru channel and Planet X News. This is Scott from the Nibiru channel. I have a space weather report for you, and we're going to be going over some material and taking a look at some things that are going on in space that is definitely affecting our planet. But before we get into all of that, I just wanted to make a small general announcement. This upcoming Tuesday, at 2 p.m. Eastern Time, we are going to have a special guest joining us on a live stream. And this is going to be our introduction to everyone. And we're going to be bringing on board our physicist who has been helping us for quite some time understanding the science behind what is going on in our solar system. Now, as you all know, we have so many people out there that just absolutely say for a fact that there is nothing going on in our solar system. They just do not want to believe. Well, the fact of the matter is there is something going on in our solar system and the possibilities of it being detrimental to humanity are quite big. So we're going to be bringing her on board. She is a professor of physics with more than 17 years teaching at a major university. She also has a PhD, and we will be referring to her as the doctor because she also has a doctorate. She's very, very smart, very intelligent, and she never believed in anything related to rogue planets or other types of solar systems moving into our solar system. However, on one fateful day, as she was taking a walk, she started to notice things in the sky that were not normal to her. And as she would continue her daily walks over the course of a year, she started to notice more and more things that were not quite right. And then, one day, she happened to look up through the clouds as the sun was setting, and she saw something that caught her eye. And that was the beginning of her interest and her investigations and her research into Planet X. And she has come up with some fantastic information 
she's been helping Chris Potter for quite some time, and she has come under a lot of criticism from trolling organizations on YouTube, and it's quite disturbing at the lengths of what these people will do to discredit an individual who is simply trying to help find out what is going on. And I'm very excited that she's now on board with us and she's been doing research now for almost a year and she is going to be publishing a lot of her material based on her research of brown dwarf stars so i will make an announcement again i will have this live stream up on the planet x news channel and this will be this upcoming tuesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. If you happen to miss the live stream, the video will be up and it's going to be approximately two hours. So if you are interested in a lot of the scientific information behind what is going on in our solar system, what has been going on for quite some time and being hidden from us, being hidden in plain sight, most definitely join us. And if you are not subscribed to the Planet X News channel, make sure you subscribe. Now, we will be back uploading videos to the Nibiru channel probably next week. We had a little tiff with YouTube on a video that I had put out, and they suspended uploads for 14 days. No big deal. I have six YouTube channels. And we will continue to get the word out. I've named it The Awakening because that is what we all need to do. We all need to come to terms with what is happening around the world. So therefore, we must wake up. If you don't wake up, you're going to get caught off guard. And everything is stacked against us. And that's a shame but we're going to have to fight through it. And I'll be honest, some of us will make it, some of us won't. But banding together as one, as a people, 